الباب من المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ما يتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لأنك مخلوق لعباد الله ولا طريق إلى معرفة هذه العبادة ولا سبيل إليها إلا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا أن يتفقهوا في الدين وأن يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون أولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع أهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما All praise is due to Allah We praise Him We worship Him We seek His assistance We seek His tawfiq We pray to Him سبحانه وتعالى to teach us that which is beneficial to us and we pray to Him to give us the tawfiq to apply it فإنه من يرد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم آمين Tonight is the night of the 21st of the Hijjah of the year 1439 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into September 1st of the Gregorian calendar 2018. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night and to make all the brothers and sisters who might be with us in this masjid or who might be tuning in live to make them mubarakeen in themselves and in their families. Allahumma ameen. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this majlis, majlis mubarak, and to make our reward when we are done here that it will be said to us, go, you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. Um, speaking of the hijjah 21st of the hijjah it means that there are only a few short days and the, another year comes to an end. And a new year starts with al-shahr Allah al-muharram. And ya akhwan, brothers and sisters, as we come to, an, to the end of one year and starts another year, we should start thinking, as we should always do, about what we've done in that past year, what has been written in our suhuf, in our book, 
what we have actually included in that book and start preparing for the new year to pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq to stick the course and stay the course and stay steadfast on his deen until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala for wallahi every single second that passes by nothing will bring it back once it's gone it's gone خلاص. no going back and al-umr of one of us keeps on diminishing and it is diminishing and decreasing with every hour, with every day, with every week, with every month, with every year that goes by. And every hour that goes by or every year that goes by, it's either for us or against us. What is written in it is either for us or it is against us. So we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq to keep obeying him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to do the good deeds, al-hasanat. And if we should err, and we do err, and each and every one of us is that person, then we should quickly hasten to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and follow the evil deeds with the good deeds in the hope that it erase it. إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِلذَّاكِرِينَ The good deeds erase the bad deeds. And by bad deeds, we mean the minor sins. And Allah Azza wa Jal from His mercy and grace subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we err, it's not the end of the world. There is a way for us out of it. We all do err, with no exception. But the muwaffaq is the one who actually quickly hastened back to Allah Azza wa Jal, is not happy with the, with the evil deeds, but rather try to change it and undo it and quickly go back to Allah Azza wa Jal, draw closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, yunib ila Allah wa yarji' ila Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and this is what we should do. Like I said, this is a milestone. It's the end of the year. So let's actually start doing some hisab, self-accountability. Let's bring ourselves to self-accountability before we are brought into account in the hope that as long as there is some remaining in this umr, as long as we are still li 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 alive, as long as there is still blood uh, pumping into this heart, let's actually uh, bring ourselves to accountability in the hope that we can change course if we're not in the right direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the happy ones in this life and in the hereafter. Also, before we start the halaqa, I want to thank all the brothers and sisters who participated with us in the Eid dinner. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to reward you generously for your participation and helping out. Um, uh, without the help of the brothers and sisters, uh, this couldn't have actually been done. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, it's all, uh, you know, uh, thanks to the brothers and sisters who actually uh, put the plan together and helped us in this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep gathering us around these gatherings of uh, brotherhood and sisterhood and love for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among al-mutahabbina fillah. The ones who love one another for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not for this dunya, not for this money, not for money, not for any benefit. I have no need for that, I, that I have from you, nor do you have anything from me. It is for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Um, this was the food of the body. Now let's move to the food of the nafs and the heart, which wallahi is a uh, more important food because the food of the body is to keep this body alive. But if the heart is dead, how good is that? If the, if the heart is dead, then how good is the food of the body? It's a dead body. And if the body is ailing, but the, but the heart is, is alive and good, then wallahi, that person is the happy one. So moving on to the food of the hearts and of the soul, which is the reason by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and his tawfiq is the reason and sabab for the happiness in this life and in the hereafter. 
قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى and this is actually what we talked about last week very quickly uh, in, in, in a minute or two we discussed the uh, statement number 121 where he said that Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said وَنَقُولُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اتَّخَذَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا إِيمَانًا وَتَصْدِيقًا وَتَسْلِيمًا and we say with Iman testifying to the truth with full submission that Allah took Ibrahim as an especially beloved one, Khalil, and, all, and Allah spoke directly to Musa. We say that Imam Abu Ja'far, the reason he is actually mentioning those two statements about Al Khalil Ibrahim and Al Kalim Musa, alayhim as salam, is that to say that Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a believe in what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned to us in the Quran. For this has been mentioned in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Hence he said, we say likewise that إِنَّ, إن اللَّهَ اتَّخَذَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And Allah Azza wa Jal told us that he spoke directly without an intermediary, without a means, he spoke directly to Musa alayhi salam. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا So this is why he's mentioning that. Because we believe in what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned to us, that Allah Azza wa Jal loves in general, He loves subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mu'mineen, amma, generally. Every Muslim and every mu'min is beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a general love by Allah Azza wa Jal. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mu'mineen. But there is levels of this mahabba, this love, and the highest of which is al khulla And Allah Azza wa Jal loved Ibrahim so much that he took him as a khalil, especially intimate friend. And we said that this also is shared by another one. al khulla is also shared by another prophet. Who's he? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also, Allah Azza wa Jal from his attributes is that he talks. He, the, he has a speech. And hence, hence one of those speeches that he talked to Musa alayhi salam. And he talked directly to him. And that is why he said, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Emphasizing that he spoke in reality to Musa alayhi salam without any intermediary. And this is also actually one of the virtues of Musa alayhi salam that Allah Azza wa Jal talked to him directly. Also, who did Allah Azza wa Jal talk to directly? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our beloved messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam actually has the two attributes. He was a, also a, a khalil of Allah Azza wa Jal, like Ibrahim alayhi salam. And also he was talked to, Allah Azza wa Jal talked to him directly like he did to Musa alayhi salam during the night of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. So we say that this khulla is a term that was used by Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran and also it was used by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith. He said, وَلَكِنَّ صَاحِبَكُمْ خَلِيلُ الرَّحْمَانِ Your friend, يعني he was talking about himself alayhi salatu wa salam. He was addressing the Sahaba. He said, but your friend, يعني the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, is the Khalil of al-Rahman. This term was used by Allah Azza wa Jal and by his Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And obviously it can be used, right? But to use other terms that have not been mentioned by Allah Azza wa Jal, nor by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is inappropriate to be used. And we gave the example of al-ishq. Some people actually use aashiq. عاشق الرحمن عاشق الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم شهيد العشق الإلهي All of this is inappropriate as a matter of fact is terribly wrong to be used because we said that although العشق is a also a level of المحبة is an extreme actually love but only is, at, is uh, suitable to be used for the kinds that mate not to be used with Allah Azza wa Jal, not to be used with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you truly love Allah Azza wa Jal, great. 
then use the same term that he used. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to go and, and exaggerate and use terms that he did not use just to show the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. As a matter of fact, merely using what, he, what Allah Azza wa Jal said is what actually proves that you love Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And he said, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِرِينَ and in another ayah, he said, فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ yani Allah Azza wa Jal is praising those people who are obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal, whom he loves, that they also love Allah Azza wa Jal. يُحِبُّونَهُ They love Allah. خلص, say, I love Allah Azza wa Jal. Say, أُحِبُّ الله. That's enough to show your love to Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we said also, speaking of, of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, we did mention that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is of two types. Anybody remembers what those two types are? Al-Kalam Shar'i. Al-Kalam Shar'i. The first type is Al-Kalam Shar'i. And we said examples of that are, what are some of the Al-Kalam Shar'i, the, the legislative speech of Allah Azza wa Jal? Quran, Injil, Torah, Zabur, Suhuf Ibrahim, etc., etc. Everything that was revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal, all of these are examples of Al Kalam al Shari. Al Kalam al Kawni, the universal speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, are all the orders that Allah Azza wa Jal gives to the angels, etc., to manage the affairs of this kingdom. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal issues the orders to the angels to do this and do that. He manages the affair of this universe. All of this is from the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal that is universal. Al-Kalam, Al-Kawni. And we gave example of that. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Kahf, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Say, يعني يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, if the sea were ink, for the words of my Lord. These words are what? The orders that Allah Azza wa Jal issues, right? For things to happen, for things to, orders to, for things to uh, come into existence, etc. This is al-kalam al-kawni. Um, surely the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord would be finished, even if we brought another, tea li another sea like it for its aid. So this means that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks a lot in terms of his speech, Al-Kalam Al-Kawni. And we say that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks when he wishes, what he wishes, what he, uh, 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 as often as he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in this, he said, imanan, we believe in that. And we explain it in the right explanation and we submit to what Allah Azza wa Jal told us. This is what we covered last week. Any questions? Okay, I'll take that for a no. Moving on. Then he said in the next statement, he said, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ And we have iman in the angels and in the prophets. This is a great statement. Because in here, Imam Abu Ja'far, and in the next statement, as a matter of fact, he also says, وَالْكُتُبِ الْمُنَزَّلَ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ And in the books, يعني we have also iman in the books which were sent down to the messengers, and we bear witness that they were upon the clear truth. Who, are, who were on the clear truth? The messengers, l'anbiya. This, these two statements from Imam Abu Ja'far, in it is a mention of the principles of the deen and the pillars of al-Iman. He specifically is mentioning al-Malaika, al-Anbiya, and al-Kutub, the sent down books who were sent down from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And as it is no secret to your honorable knowledge, I think every, each and every one of you knows this, that the pillars of Al-Iman that came in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are six. Al-Iman have six pillars. Namely, Al-Iman Billah, the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Malaika, the angels. Al-Kutub, the books. Uh, Al-Nabiyyin, or Al-Mursaleen, 
the prophets yawm la akhir the day after and al qadar khayrihi wa sharrih min allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so these six are the pillars of the belief in allah tabaraka wa ta'ala iman and as you know and this is just a quick refresher if you wish that the the evidences to, to this is qawlullah tabaraka wa ta'ala in the ayah of surah al-baqarah ولكن البر من آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين but the bir is the quality of the one who believes in Allah the last day the angels the book and the prophets in another ayah Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Baqarah آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله The messenger, يعني Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم believes in what has been sent down to him from his Lord and so do the believers They believe, each one believes in Allah, his angels, his books and his messengers Also in the ayah of Surah An-Nisa يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله والكتاب الذي أنزل من قبل ومن يكفر بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر فقد ضل ضلالا بعيدا All who you believe believe in Allah and his messenger and the book which he sent down to his messenger and the scripture which he sent down to those before him and whosoever disbelieves in Allah his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, then indeed he has strayed far away. And we mentioned before as well that Al-Qadr was mentioned separately in several ayat. Inna kulla shay'in khalaqunahu bi qadr wa kana amru Allahi qadran maqdura. Likewise, the hadith, the very famous hadith of Jibreel uh, alayhi salam, you know this, right? The hadith of Jibreel, hadith. Uh, uh, Abu Hafs Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an which is in Sahih al-Bukhar in Sahih Muslim uh, where uh, he came alayhi al salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked him about many things including al-Iman and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said an tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al-akhir wal qadar khayrihi wa sharrihi toward the end he said do you know ya Umar who the one who asked me was he said Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam he said it was Jibril who came to teach you your religion إِنَّهُ جِبْرِيلْ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ So we know all of this, that these are the proofs that Al-Iman has six pillars. He said, وَنُؤْمِنْ Now obviously in these two statements he's mentioning three of them, الملائكة, النبيين, and الكتب. He said, وَنُؤْمِنْ And let me change the color here. He said, وَنُؤْمِنْ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِالْمَلَائِكَةِ What do we mean by نُؤْمِن in here? Or what did he mean by نُؤْمِن in this statement? We say that الإيمان in these matters الإيمان بالملائكة الإيمان بالنبيين الإيمان بالكتب It means that this is التصديق الجازم which is the strong belief beyond the hint of doubt that all of these things are حق are true no doubt about that So الإيمان بالملائكة it means that we believe that al malaika are haq in general and in the details of them, you know, of the angels. Likewise, al iman bin nabiyyin, it means that we believe that al anbiya and al rusul are haq, are true in general and in the individual, each one of them. Likewise, we say that al iman bil kutub, it means that we believe that al kutub, the books, are haq from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. In general, and each one of them was haq in specific. So this is what we mean by al-iman bil malaika. It means the tasdiq, al-jazim, that we be, that we believe that they are true haq beyond the hint of doubt. This iman in al malaika nabiyin al kutub is of two types. There is the iman al ijmali, which is the general iman. Yani we believe in the, in the angels in general. And this is what is required of every Muslim to be a Muslim to begin with. Yani this is what is wajib 
upon every Muslim to believe in. And this is the minimum level of Iman that is required of every Muslim, of every person to become a Muslim, to be a Muslim to begin with. Whoever denies the angels in general to begin with, he or she is not a Muslim. Any person who denies the books in general, then he or she is not a Muslim to begin with. We call this is the general belief which is required, the mujzi, that is sufficient iman, the minimum iman that is required of every Muslim. There is also above and beyond that, which is mustahab. The more you know, the better. And the higher your iman is. The more you know and you believe to tusaddiq in that knowledge, what you learned from the book and from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the better and the higher the iman you have. And this is where the people actually compete and they have varying iman because they have different knowledge and the more they do and ahlul ilm, the people of knowledge, they actually compete in that. Some are more knowledgeable than others and some have higher iman than others based on that knowledge, based on that difference in the knowledge. And the more they know and the more they do based on that knowledge, the higher the iman is. And this is what we say is mustahab, highly recommended and encouraged. Al-Malaika is a plural. And it is derived from the word al-uluka, al-malaika, from al-uluka in the Arabic language, which is a risala. Al-uluka is a risala. And hence we say that al-malaika are actually specific and special type of messengers, or rusul. And they have each and every one of them has a specific message that they are tasked with. And the malaika like we said, they are mursaloon, they are sent, right? And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal called them al-mursaleen. And in the stronger opinion, in terms of explanation, uh, the first ayah of Surah al-mursalat, wal-mursalati urfa, they said al-mursalat are the angels, which is the plural of mursal. Mursal, another Mursal, another Mursal, Mursalat. Mursalat, the sent, are the angels. So the meaning becomes by the angels sent forth one after another. Well, Mursalati Urfa. By the angels sent forth one after another. So the, mas so the Malaika, from their name, it has the meaning of message. Sent with a specific message, with a specific task. Al-Malaika, brothers and sisters, are from the world of the unknown. Alam al-Ghayb. Has any one of you seen a mess, a, an angel? Has any one of you seen an angel? It is because from Alam al-Ghayb, we cannot actually see them. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala created them from light and their exact creation is unknown to us and only known to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Exactly how they look like and how their creation is, is only known to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. But we believe in them because we were told about them and they are from Al Ghayb, from the unseen. And they are servants of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ibad. As a matter of fact, they are Ibadun Mukramun. They are honored servants and slaves of Allah Tabaraka. Ta he created them, like I said, from light. And he made them dedicated to his worship. He made them, Allah Azza wa Jal made the angels dedicated to his worship, to the worship of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And each and every one of them is assigned and tasked with a specific task. So they do different things. And each one of them, they know exactly what their task is. They are ibad, mukramun. So they're not, they are not daughters of Allah Azza wa Jal, like some say. And they are not sons of Allah Azza wa Jal. They're not children of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. But they are honored servants. Allah Azza wa Jal honored them and tasked them with certain tasks. 
they do according to the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal. They do by the orders of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So they are servants who worship Allah Azza wa Jal non-stop. They are not to be worshipped in themselves. They are not to be worshipped in themselves. They are servants who are honored and purified. There is no defect in their creation. They are, there is no defect in their manners, khuluq. And there is no defect in their worship of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. They, as a matter of fact, they do not stop from obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and worshiping, worshiping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have absolute servitude to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ They, yani the angels, glorify His praises night and day. We sometimes get bored. We sometimes have shortcomings. We give up, right? We slack off. They actually praise their Lord day and night and they worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala day, day and, and night and they never slacken. Yani they never slack off to do so. He, Allah Azza wa Jal, assigned to them certain tasks. He tasked them with certain uh, jobs and tasks and they carry it out by the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal in His kingdom. لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون. They speak not until he has spoken and they act on his command. يعني on the command of Allah تبارك وتعالى. They uh, act upon his command سبحانه وتعالى. Some of them are tasked with the wahi, revelation. Some of them are tasked with the rain and the wind and the plants. Some of them are tasked with taking the soul and putting people to death. Some are actually tasked with blowing the trumpet. And some of them are tasked with writing the deeds and the speeches of the son of Adam. And some of them are tasked with maintaining the mountains. And some of them are tasked with the fetuses in the wombs of the pregnant woman. And you know from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, the famous hadith that we have actually explained on multiple occasions, the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, where he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, then an angel is sent at the 42nd night, and he comes and blows the, uh, I'm sorry, and he comes at the 42nd night, and he asks Allah Azza wa Jal, and Allah Azza wa Jal decrees what he wishes, so he asks, ay Rabb, is it going to be a boy or a girl? And Allah Azza wa Jal decrees what he wishes. And then he writes his rizq and his deeds and his lifespan, his ajal. And ashaqiyun am sa'id. Happy or unhappy, meaning by the ending. Will they die as happy or unhappy? So these are also angels who are tasked with the fetuses in the wombs of their mothers. Al malaika, brothers and sisters, Al-Mala'ika are levels, multiple levels and multiple virtues. Some of them are better than others. Some of them, they're not all at the same level of honor and virtue. Some of them are better than others. And the best of all the Mala'ika, the best of all the Mala'ika are the three that were mentioned in the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to frequently say during the night prayer, where he said in the hadith which is related by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, rahimahumullahu ta'ala, I'm sorry, Imam Muslim and Abi Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi and Al-Nasai and Ibn Majah, he alayhi salatu wasalam used to say a lot during the night prayer, Allahumma rabba jibra'ila wa mika'ila wa israfil, fatir al-samawati wal-ard. عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم O Allah, Lord of Jibreel and Mikael and Israfil Creator of the heavens and the earth Knower of the unseen and the seen you judge between your slaves concerning wherein they differ. O oh Allah, guide me to the disputed matters of truth 
for you are the one who guides to the straight path. اللهم اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك. اللهم آمين. These three, Jibra'il and Mika'il and Israfil, are the best three angels of all the different types of angels that were mentioned for they have a great virtue and they have a great honor and level uh, and fadl uh, with respect to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And you notice that all of these three are tasked with the different types of lives. With the different types of lives. Anwa al hayat al salatha. Jibra'il is the, is the one who is tasked with wahi, revelation, which is wallahi ya ibadullah, is the life of the hearts. And the need of the servants of an ibad to the revelation to wahi is the greatest need. And by al-wahi is the life of the hearts. Hayat al So Jibreel is the angel of al-wahi. And he is Amin al-wahi. He is entrusted with al-wahi, which is the life of the hearts. قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ Surah Al-Nahl. Say, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ruh al-Qudus, who is Jibreel, has brought it, yani the Qur'an, down from your Lord with truth. And by this Qur'an is the life of the people. And their happiness in this life and in the hereafter. That's the first type of life. The life of the hearts. Hayat al Mikael is the one who is, is the angel who is tasked with asbab al-hayat. The means that we need to live on this earth. He is tasked with the rain. He is tasked with the plants. He is tasked with the wind, etc., etc. All the means that we need to be able to carry out our life on this earth. This is the second type of life. Hayat al-dunya. Israfil, he is tasked with blowing in the trumpet. And this second blow in the trumpet is the one that brings people back to life. It resurrects people back to life by the order of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Hence the third type of life, which is an eternal life, a life that there is no death after, after it. Either in Jannah or in Hellfire. So you see that the three of them, they actually, what is the common among these three, is that they are tasked with the different types of lives, with the asbab of the three different types of life. Hayat al-qulub, al-wahi, this hayat in this dunya, the, uh, you know, from the different uh, means of the life, to care to be able to live in this life, and the life after death, which is when, you know, death, when we are resurrected and brought into, back into life. And this is what makes these are the chiefs of the malaika, sadat al malaika, these three. And they are the best ones, and they are the highest ones, and the closest ones to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Tayyip. <clears throat> al malaika also, like they differ in their honor, they differ obviously, like we said, in their task. The task that are ukilat ilayhim. Yani each angel is muwakkal from a tawkil, task with a different task. This tawkil was used by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal used that word in the ayah of Surah Al-Sajda. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Muwakkal. He is tasked with taking the lives, the soul of the son of Adam when death, when death comes unto them. This is the angel of, of death. Say the angel of death who is set over you will take your souls, then you shall be brought to your Lord. So Allah Azza wa Jal tasked the angel of death to take the soul of the living creature, to take them and put them to death. That doesn't mean 
that the angel of death is alone in that task. He is one, and he is the only one who actually takes the soul away. Every angel who is tasked with a task, they have a specific task, they also have angels that work under them, and they help them out in their task. So the angel of death has also angels around him that they take orders from him, and they help him in carrying out his death, his uh, task to take the soul away and put the people to death. And they, like I said, they take the orders from their chief angel. So Malak al Maut has other Malaika who actually also help him in putting people to death. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al An'am, Hatta Ida Ja Ahadakum al Mautu Tawafathu Rusuluna in the plural. He didn't say Tawafathu Tawafahu Rasuluna one. He said Allah Azza wa Jal said Tawafathu Rusuluna Wahum La Yufarritun. Until when death approaches one of you, our messengers, messengers, so there are angels of death, <coughs> take his soul and they never neglect their duty. Rusul, they are those angels who actually help the angel of death in carrying out his task. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبَصِرُونَ we are actually closer to the son of Adam than you, yani the angels of death. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling the angels of death, although you are tasked with taking the soul away, although you actually come to the son of Adam and take his soul, yet Allah Azza wa Jal, who is like we said before, is above the arsh, above the throne, he is closer to that son of Adam than the angels of death are. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ We are closer to him. Than you, but you not, but you do not see that. يعني ملائكة الموت, meaning the angels of death. But obviously, when we say closer to them, we said this closeness is in what, in knowledge and in power, not closeness in Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. Right? طيب. A lot of you, not a lot of you, but some people may think after this discussion, or it may actually cross the mind of one of you. That wait a minute. So we're saying that Allah Azza wa Jal created angels and each one of them is tasked with a certain task. Some do this, some do that. Some do, so they actually help in managing the affairs. Could it be that Allah Azza wa Jal created them because He has a need for them? Because He couldn't take care of this universe on His own and He needed a helping hand? Is that why He created the angels? No. Absolutely not. Allah Azza wa Jal did not create the angels to, for, to help him out because he is in need. Allah Azza wa Jal is in Ghaniyul Hamid. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't need them. But he created them to show us another great creation of his subhanahu wa ta'ala and for a great wisdom that he had to actually assign each one of them by his orders to carry a certain task. Again, not out of need, but out of showing the great creation of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, otherwise He is Al-Ghaniyu Al-Hamid. Al-Malaika, we said they are created from light, from nur. And they fill the sky. As a, as a matter of fact, there is not a small space in the sky that is empty from the angels, that there are no angels in them. They actually fill the sky. But that doesn't mean that they block the sky. Because they are not like an object that blocks. They are from light, like we said. Right? They are not an object that blocks. They are from light, so they don't actually block, but they fill uh, the sky. And Allah Azza wa Jal talked about them. And He said, وَمَا مِنَّا إِلَّا لَهُ مَقَامٌ معلوم. There is not one of us, yani the angels, they are saying, there, there is not one, not one of us, but he has his known place in the sky. And also, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الصَّافُونَ وَإِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الْمُسَبِّحُونَ Verily, we, the angels, we stand in rows in the prayers. Verily, we, 
the angels are 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 they who glorify Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So they glorify Allah Azza wa Jal and they worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith in hadith uh, which is in Sahih al tirmidhi or in the in Imam al tirmidhi Sunan al tirmidhi he said attat al sama wa huqqa laha an ta'it ma fiha mawdi'u arba'ati asabi' illa wa malakun wadi'un jabhatahu sajidan lillah ta'ala heaven has squeaked and it has right to do so there is not a space of four fingers in which there's no there's not an angel who is prost- who is prostrating his forehead before Allah the exalted yani every the space of every four fingers there is an angel who is prostrating to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the sky so you can imagine how many there are and how much they fill the sky as a matter of fact to give you an idea of how many there are so there are so many of them that no one knows their number except Allah tabarak wa ta'ala but just to get you an idea we all know about the bayt al ma'mur in the sky which is the qibla of the sky like al kaaba is the qibla of the people of earth this is where the angels go and pray and worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala each day 70,000 angels they go into the bayt al ma'mur and they pray to Allah azza wa jalla once they leave they can never go back because there is no space for them. Every day, 70,000. Every day. And they pray once, and that's it. They cannot go back and pray because there are other 70,000 every day who go and pray. So this is just to get you an idea of their number. al malaika their creation... Exactly how they look like and how they are, obviously, is only known to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We do not know exactly how they are. We know they are created from light. We know some of the description. We know that they have wings, but we don't know the exact creation of them. It is from the unseen. Only Allah Azza wa Jalla know about that. But they are different from the creation of the son of Adam. They don't look like us. They have different creation, including they have wings. Allah Azza wa Jal says, جَاعِلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا أُولِي أَجْنِحَةٍ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعٍ Who made the angels messengers with wings, two or three or four, he increases in creation what he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them, they actually have more than three wings or four wings. Some of them, they have actually hundreds of wings. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha." He increases in creation what He will, Subhanahu wa Taala. For example, Jibril alayhi salam, who is the best, who is the best of all the angels, right? He is better. So we said the three that are the best angels are Jibril, or Jibril, and Mikael and Israfil. But Jibril is the best of the three, and then Jibril, and then Mikael, and then Israfil. Jibril alayhi salam is the best of the of the angels and he is the most honored among all of them he has 600 wings he has 600 wings alayhi salam obviously we don't we cannot see him we cannot see any of the angels and when they actually come to earth they don't come in their original shape allah azza wa jalla gave them the capability or some of them the capability to actually convert into the shape of a human being and this is how Jibreel alayhi salam, in general, this is how he would come to earth. He would take the shape of a man, typically Dihya al-Kalbi, one of the Sahaba. He would take the shape of Dihya al-Kalbi radiallahu an, and he would come in his shape. Except two times. Yani either Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, he would see him in the shape of a man. Except in two times, he saw Jibreel in his original shape. Once in Mecca, he saw, he saw him in the far away horizon. He filled the horizon. He filled the horizon. And another time, he saw him during the night of Al-Isra' wal Mi'raj, you know, when he was ascended to the sky, near to Sidrat al-Muntaha. He saw Jibreel in his original form. Only those two times. In other times, 
he saw him only in his in, in a shape like a man. طيب. <clears throat> الإيمان بالملائكة. He said, ونؤمن بالملائكة. This إيمان بالملائكة, we said, is a ركن from أركان الإيمان. Is a pillar, واجب. Is a pillar, واجب from أركان الإيمان. And the meaning that it is a ركن, a pillar of an iman, it means that iman is not valid unless all of its pillars, including iman bil malaika, are there. When we say ruqn of something, right, it means that these are necessary to be there for that something to exist. You say this, these are pillars of something, it means that they have to be there and that something cannot exist without its pillars. For example, We say these are the pillars of the masjid. Can you imagine the existence of the masjid without these pillars? Obviously, I'm, I, don't want, I don't want to even imagine that happening. But if we take these three pillars away, what happens to this masjid? Collapse. If we take one pillar of an iman, what happens to an iman? It collapses. Hence, they are called pillars. Pillars because they must be there for the iman to be there, to exist. We take one of them away and the iman collapses, is not there. So this is why we say the iman bil malaika is a rukun from arkan al iman and wajiba, and it has to be there, like the iman bil nabiyyin and the iman bil kutub, etc., etc., all of the six. And it is by the consensus of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, all the scholars and all the people of knowledge, that whoever does not believe in al malaika, in other words, put it, other, put it differently, Whoever denies the malaika, there's no malaika. What malaika? There's no malaika. And that person is not a Muslim to begin with. He's not a Muslim. <clears throat> Because he is the belying Allah Azza wa Jal, who mentioned them so many times in the Quran, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned them so many times in the Sunnah. Alayhi uh, salatu wassalam. Likewise, whoever does not believe in the Uh, Nabiyin in the prophets is not a Muslim. Whoever does not believe in the books, in the kutub, then he or she is not a Muslim. We said this iman has two levels. There is an iman al wajib, what is wajib of every Muslim to have, and there is the um, what is above and beyond, that is mustahab. Remember, we mentioned this a little uh, earlier. So there is an iman. That which is the general iman that every Muslim has to have, which is farq upon every Muslim. And there is an iman al tafsiri, which is in detail, which is according to the knowledge. Some people know more, some people know less. And the more they know, the better, the, the higher their iman and the greater their iman is. And so it varies between one person and another. What do we mean by an iman al wajib, which is that what is required of every Muslim? And by the way, this applies to all the different pillars. Yani in Iman bin Nabiyin, also there is what is required of every Muslim, and there is the above and beyond. The Iman bin Kutub in the books, there is what's required of every Muslim at a minimum. This is the minimum, Mujzi, which is wajib upon every Muslim, sufficient to, be, to make that Muslim, to, that, to make that person a Muslim. And there is above and beyond. And it is emphasized and recommended to know more and more and more. What is required of every person to be a Muslim with respect to Iman bin Malaika? They must believe in their existence that there is a creation called the angels from light and that they are servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are not to be worshipped themselves. They are not children of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are not sons or daughters of Allah Azza wa Jal. But they are creation. They are servants. Slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal honored from light that Allah Azza wa Jal created. This is what is wajib and sufficient. Any person who believes in just that, they have met the belief in al malaika This is enough. And this is the level of Islam. Now above and beyond that, the more the better. What is mustahab, it is so recommended to actually believe in everything that Allah Azza wa Jal told us beyond that, some of their names, some of their tasks, some of their attributes and what they do, the more you know them, the better, right? 
and the greater the Iman, or even mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the Quran, for example, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions to us several of the Malaika. For example, Jibreel. Jibreel was mentioned <coughs> several times in the Quran. A Muslim who has never read the Quran, although it is sad to say that, but some people never read the Quran. Or could be a newly converted Muslim or somebody who doesn't, doesn't <coughs> uh, know the Arabic language, cannot read the Quran, right? They've never read the Quran. They may have never heard of Jibreel. They know the Malaika. They say, we believe in the Malaika, but Jibreel, I don't know who Jibreel is. If they believe in the Malaika, that they exist, they are from light, they are servants, we say, you're, 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 you've met the minimum requirement. But now that we told you there, there is Jibreel, there is angel called Jibreel, and he is the one entrusted with the wahi, he came upon every messenger. He was the one who, re, who came down with every revelation upon every message, messenger in Prophet ﷺ. Right? Now, they must believe in that. They must yusaddiq bi Jibreel. Why? Because now they have the evidence. They were told about him. That the fact that they now have been told about him, they cannot deny Jibreel anymore. If they haven't heard about him in specific, no problem. But now that they heard about him, then they must believe in him. And they say that one of the angels is Jibreel and he was tasked with the revelation. If they know about J uh, Mikael, then they must believe in, them, in him. If they know about Israfil, then they must believe. Malak al maut that angel of death, then they have, they must believe in him. Etc, etc. So this extra recommended belief beyond the mandatory one, is based on the knowledge. You learn about some of the malaika from the Quran or from the Sunnah, then you must believe in that extra uh, information. Okay. <clears throat> so we say this iman, which is based on knowledge and ilm, right? And we say that an iman is based on knowledge. How can you believe in something without knowing about it? An iman is founded on ilm, on knowledge. And the more you know, and you make tasdiq in it, you hold it as true, and you believe that it is true, the greater that iman is, and the better that iman is. And that is why the scholars, who obviously know better, and they have knowledge more of the text and the scripture and the attributes of them, they have a greater iman and they have a higher iman. And this is obviously based on the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani whomever Allah Azza wa Jal gives him tawfiq or her tawfiq to learn more and more, then they are going higher in the ladder of iman. And that's why you see people are different, right? They have varying levels of iman according to how much they know and how much they make tasdiq. Right? They believe in, in that. And this is from the aspect of what makes the iman higher, increases the iman, and decreases the iman. It increases with more knowledge and more tasdiq. Uh, iman bil malaika. Does it have any impact? Does it have any fruit for the believer? A lot of us, by the way, when we actually talk about an iman bil malaika, like we mentioned also before, the iman in general, when we study the matters of iman, I don't know if you remember this, but I mentioned this before. Do we study the matters of iman just for the sake of the luxury of that knowledge and that we say we believe in them and have no impact on our or no fruit on our deeds and a'mal and suluk? Is that the case? No. We say that when we actually study the matters of Iman, to believe in them, but to also have an impact on us. Each and every matter of Iman that we believe in should have an impact on our deeds. There is a fruit that should be reflected in our deeds and our suluk. A lot of people when we talk about an Iman, about an Malaika, right? Most people, as a matter of fact, they don't see what fruits, what impacts, I mean, Malaika, yeah, I believe in the Malaika. But what is the impact of that belief? What does this, how should this get reflected in my suluk? 
Are there benefits that we learn from an iman in al-malaika? Yes, there are. As a matter of fact, there are three different fruits or different types of benefit that we learn or that we earn from this belief in al-malaika. One, first and foremost, the impact of our belief in al-malaika has to do with the tawheed and knowledge that, relate, that is related to tawheed. How is that? When the believer knows that al-malaika are honored servants of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. They are not al-ibadun mukramun. They are honored servants of Allah azza wa jal. And that despite the fact that they do not disobey their Lord. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They do not. They never disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. They are perfect obedient of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they do what they have been ordered to do. ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They uh, perfectly obey Allah تبارك وتعالى. They yet they fear Allah Azza wa Jal. They fear their Lord سبحانه وتعالى. Although they are so close to Him سبحانه وتعالى. And they worship him, a perfect worship. They, pur- they wor- pur- worship Allah Azza wa Jal, a perfect worship. And in this is a refutation of those who claim the malaika as sons and daughters of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they worship him beneath Allah Azza wa Jal, or beside Allah Azza wa Jal. So when you know that they are actually, in themselves, they are honored servants, they worship Allah perfectly, but they are not to be worshipped, this has to do of increasing the uh, tawheed and avoiding that which invalidated tawheed, right? We don't worship them. They are creation of Allah Azza wa Jal and they are perfect servant, obedient servant of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Also, when you hear about their attributes and what they do and some of their deeds, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that they are actually yakhafun Allah, they fear Allah Azza wa Jal, yakhshawn Allah, they have great fear of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and they love Allah Azza wa Jal, they obey His orders, they stay away, perfectly away from His prohibitions. They never disobey Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So when we know that they are perfect servants and they do that, we learn from that. And we should do similarly. We love Allah Azza wa Jal, we fear Him, we obey Him, we should strive to obey Him as perfectly as we can and st- steer away from disobeying Him as much as we can, right? So we learn from this, and we earn uh, uh, we, uh, we earn this example from them, believing in them, and they are uh, <clears throat> the perfect servants of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So learning the attributes of the angels is from the knowledge of the tawheed and how we should worship Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And they have the perfect tawheed to Allah, azza wa jalla. So this is one benefit, one fruit that we earn and learn from our iman in the malaika. The second is has to do with our deeds and our manners and our suluk. How is that? When, you, when we learn that some of the angels, some of the groups of the angels are the ones who are tasked with writing everything that we say and we do and we utter this should be, when we remember that, when you actually believe in that and you know that, then this should be something that should push you to do better and avoid disobeying because you know everything is written on you and everything is being recorded. When you know that there are two angels who are assigned to you and each and every one of us, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Surah Qaf. Not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready, yani to record it. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kiraman katibin, ya'lamuna ma taf'alun, Surah Al-Infitar. Kiraman, yani honorable, katibin, yani they write down from Al-Katib, Kitabah, writing down your deeds, they know all that you do. When we are aware of this, when we know that, whether we are adult and we, or whether we are young people, or whether we are uh, young kids, when you know that, this has a great impact on your deeds and on your saluk. Everything is recorded. Those who are heedless about that, they may not actually take. You know, they may not actually pay attention. They may not be actually careful about that. 
But when you know that everything, every single word that you utter is written upon you and is being recorded, then you're going to think twice before you utter every word. Is this good? Or is this not good? Do I want this to be part of my book? I get angry. I get into a situation. And I want to voice my anger. But then I remember everything is written on me. Everything is being recorded. The good and the bad. Then I start thinking twice. If I say that, it's going to be recorded on me. Do I want to be that to be part of my record? And if I should err and I say something, then I quickly try to undo it by following the evil deeds or the evil or the bad words with a good one. In the hasanat yudhibin as-sayyat. Verily, the good deeds remove the evil deeds. ذلك ذكرى للذاكرين. اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين كثيرا. And our sisters from the zakirat. اللهم آمين. Because this remembrance and conscious of Allah Tabaraka wa Taala and that everything is being recorded is a great helper for each and every one of us to always do good and always realign and always go back and to nunib ila Allah Azza wa Jal and to go back to Him. This is a great impact and a great fruit of this iman in al-mala'ika, specifically those who are assigned to writing down the deeds and the speeches of the son of Adam. Also, one of the benefits of al-iman in al-mala'ika is that it, gets, it is connected and it points to the other types of iman. The iman in al-mala'ika also relates and points to the other types of al-iman. For example, the person who believes in al-mala'ika and who believes that some of them are tasked with al-wahi, with the revelation. This wahi is what? Is nothing but the books that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed upon His messengers. Yani al-Quran, al-Injil, al-Tawrah. This is the wahi of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala that Jibreel alayhi salam came down with. And these books came down upon his prophets and messengers, the Anbiya and the Rusul alayhi salatu wassalam. So you see how the Iman in al Malaika relates to the Kutub, the books, and it relates to the messengers and the prophets. Because these Malaika brought down this revelation in the form of books, hence the Iman in the books, upon the messengers and the prophets, hence the Iman in the messengers and the prophets alayhi salam. So you see how the iman in the malaika actually relates to the other two types. As a matter of fact, I tend to think that the iman Abu Ja'far specifically mentioned these three in here because they are related to one another. He gathered these three particular types of iman, malaika and al nabiyin and al kutub because they are so interrelated. The iman in al malaika this over here, the Malaika, some of them are Jibreel, who is Amin al-Wahi, who is interested with al-Wahi. This Wahi is, is the books, I'm sorry here, is the books, the Kutub. And these books came down upon al-Anbiya over here, and the Rusul alayhi salam. So you see how they are related. So this Iman in al-Malaika points to the other, to the remaining types of and pillars of al-Iman. Israfil is one of the Malaika as well. And he is the one who is entrusted with what? Blowing the trumpet. Which is Al-Ba'th, resurrection. Resurrection has to do with Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Right? Yawm Al-Akhir. So you see how this relates to the day after. The day when the trumpet will be blown. And also, some of the Malaika are Malak al-Mawt, the angel of death who takes the soul away, which also has to do with the hereafter. So you see this actually points to Iman bil yawm al-Akhir. Also some of them, of the angels, are tasked with the fetuses as we talked before. هو الذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء He is, he, it is he who shapes you in the wombs as he pleases subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we talked about the angel who gets sent at the 42nd night, and he writes the four matters by the will of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. A shaqiyun am sa'id, a dhakarun am untha, male or female, rizquhu, ajaluhu, 
عمله etc etc and Allah Azza wa Jal decrees what he wishes so this actually has to do with the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal what time? 9.15 okay alright let me uh, bring it to a, a conclusion inshallah so we see that this iman in al-malaika which we never thought about before connects to all the different types of of the belief that we learn are the pillars of an iman billah tabaraka wa ta'ala so you see how it actually has fruits that actually points to the other pillars of an iman may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who have the right belief who believe in allah azza wa jal and his angels and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us comprehend those fruits and lessons that we learn from this belief in the malaika and have make us implement this and benefit from it إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين